Well, let's turn now to the snow and the misery. It's piling up across the Great Lakes region. Six feet of snow already on the ground. Another three feet possible today. And people lucky enough to be able to get out of their homes are facing a very slippery commute this morning. NBC's Lester Holt has made it to Cheektowaga, New York, just east of Buffalo. Lester, good morning to you. Matt, good morning. Take a look. It really is that much snow. We got hit during the night with, with thunder snow. It's pretty to look at, but it is dangerous. There are neighborhoods here virtually cut off. Houses that you, you simply can't get in the front door. They're buried with snow. At least seven people have died as a result of this storm so far. The New York Thruway remains closed. A lot of street closures, driving bans in effect, and crews are doing all they can to work between these persistent bands of snow. In the brief calm before this second storm, two sounds echoed across the Buffalo area. The hum of snowblowers and the crunch of shovels. This means I'm going to lose a lot of weight and miss a lot of work. Comparisons were made to storms past. Blizzard 77, we didn't have as much snow. And some in blizzard-weary Buffalo are even embracing this early winter. This snow event was more like an invasion for Chris Hazard and her family. Their back door now barricaded against the elements. So that is how we're hopefully going to keep the snow out. Better hope you remembered where you parked, otherwise the car you dig out may not be your own. We have the National Guard that has been called out. New York's governor says people were rescued from nearly a hundred vehicles. At least one snowed-in resident used a drone to record images of his neighborhood, transformed by the storm. The Buffalo Bills have until Sunday to transform this back into a football stadium. They're offering $10 an hour and game tickets to volunteers. It's incredible how this snow has fallen. A place like this, you'll see six feet go a few miles away. You may see only a few inches. One of the big concerns here today with the snow piling up day three now is the risk of roof collapses. There have been some reports, no reports of anyone injured by a roof collapse, but certainly a big danger here. Now, how much more of this will we get in this area? Let's put that question now to Al Roker. Al, good morning. Hey, good morning, Lester. Stay warm. I know what that's like out there. Believe me, you used to live out in that area. Let's show you what we've got going on. Our friends have been tweeting out, look out this back door. This is from Megan Taylor. <laughs> I mean, opening my door to try to go outside in Buffalo and then being 4891. Driveway clear, ready for round two. Well, let's get going. And you can see those bands of snow setting up. Nothing in Buffalo right now, but in Hamburg, we've got snow and blowing and drifting snow. And that's going to be the case today. Winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings in the western Great Lakes, lake effect snow watches and warnings for the eastern Great Lakes. And you can see that pattern, the wind pattern shifting across. And we watch as the band of lake effect snow slides to the south and then finally dissipates. So western Great Lakes, we're talking anywhere about six to nine inches of snow, but here it is. This is the place, 36 to four, 48 inches of snow between Jamestown, Springville. Snow falling, guys, at about four inches per hour with lightning. On a 100 by 150 foot uh, flat roof, we could be talking a million pounds of snow. And we've got rain coming on Saturday and Sunday. Storm drains are clogged, and you add that snow on top, there's going to be a lot of roof collapses over the weekend and flooding there. Scary situation, Al. Thank you so much. All right, now to that unprecedented November snow crippling the Buffalo region. This morning, the death toll is rising, and there are new worries over what is going to happen when all that snow starts to melt. NBC's Dylan Dreyer is in Hamburg, New York. Dylan, good morning. Good morning, Carson. You know, with their vehicles snowed in, there have been several people living inside this Walmart since Monday, basically making their own little community. And in communities all across this area, sure, there's a huge sigh of relief that the snow is finally over, but now there's also concern about its long-lasting impacts. Widespread concern this morning that a year's worth of snow over a few days is just too much to bear. We've been dealing with numerous reports of collapsing roofs. No sooner had the snow stopped than residents worked to get it off their homes and businesses by any means necessary. I could hear a crack. I looked up. I had about a 16-foot crack between the wall and the ceiling. So I told the wife it's time to get out. More than 100 patients were evacuated from a senior center over concerns the roof wouldn't hold. The scrape of plow can be heard everywhere as crews work around the clock to clear the streets. 
Here in Hamburg, more than 30 people have been stranded in a Walmart since Monday. I know exactly where my vehicle is. It's <laughs> under 10 feet of snow out in the main entrance. <laughs> Their cars buried. These guys have camped out. Where else? In the entertainment section. Others sacked out in the darker automotive section. What do you got cooking in here? For dinner, a fellow captive of the store made beef stew. When my crew and I left the store in our SUV, we got stuck too. Luckily, a plow helped us out of the Walmart parking lot. The Buffalo Bills will have to hit the road as well. This Sunday's game against the New York Jets is being moved from Ralph Wilson Stadium to some place that's not encased in snow. And the NFL has announced that the game will be played Monday night in Detroit at Ford Field. It's a domed field, so there is no concern for snow. But we've also heard that some of the players actually have to get picked up by snowmobile and taken to the airport. Now, as for the people inside the Walmart, they should be able to dig out their cars today, but they're not going anywhere until the travel bans are lifted in this area. And Al, you know, then we go into the weekend and have to deal with the concern about all the rain that's going to be absorbed by all this snow. So it's just concern after concern around. Here. That's right. We're going to take a look at that right now, Dylan. Thank you so much. The good news is the Lake Effect snow machine finally starting to wind down. You can see those bands of snow set down to the south. You can actually see sunshine, and we are looking at clear roads. Pavement actually is available there. We're looking at maybe another six to nine inches of snow between Watertown and Utica. That's the good news. Here's the bad news news. One, two punch. Temperatures will slowly be warming through tomorrow on into Saturday and Sunday. Rain moves in Saturday and the warmest and wettest point is going to be Sunday into Monday. Look at the heavy rain coming in plus temperatures in the 40s and 50s. That rain has that snow has nowhere to go and so with one to two inches of rain on top of roofs already we are going to see more roof collapse and flooding is a big problem. Flood watches for the three counties surrounding Buffalo Buffalo because the storm drains are all blocked, the rain and snow has nowhere to go, and so streams, rivers, and streets are going to probably flood coming up on Monday in the Buffalo region. What a mess. Yeah, it is a mess. Thanks, Al.